Welcome to the Super Sentai Brothers. This is episode 9 of License to Car Ranger, the internet's best and only podcast dedicated to Gekiso Sentai Car Ranger. Uh, every week we watch an episode of the show. We share our thoughts with you, the listeners. I'm doing this wrong, aren't I? No, you're right. Am you're I doing, doing this right? right? It's just weird because you're I'm looking at your face while I'm doing it. I mean, listen, I, I, I can't do anything about the face. We're no, in this, we're in the same room you're together. Nice. Your face is nice. That's not what I'm saying. I just... <laughs> Oh my gosh, we're st- oh, we're doing another rehash bit from the McElroys again. Are we? Oh yeah, this is the thing that they this is the thing that those other funny internet brothers talk about, like because they also don't record in the same room and then mm-hmm. sometimes they do and it's bizarre. I'm like 2 feet away from you and I'm looking at your face while I talk to you. I'm not used to it. Well, it probably wasn't helping that I was looking directly into your eyes while saying welcome to the Super Sentai <laughs> brothers as though you needed to be welcomed. <laughs> You are the only other person on earth who does not need to be welcomed That's to true. it. true. You are, in fact, the other brother. Um, anyway, we're watching episode 9 today. It is called A U-Turn to the Stars. Yep. Uh, its original air date was April 26th, 1996. Written, as all of the episodes so far have been, by Yoshio Urasawa. I don't know when or if that is going to change. I don't know if I want it to. I don't know that I want it to either. Because um, there's uh, there's been a delightful consistency to it so far. There is, you know, I think it goes both ways. I think it cuts both ways. I think there's something to be said for a mm-hmm. lot of people getting their hands on it. Mm-hmm. I think that's probably how you end up with some of your wackier episodes. Oh, yeah. Uh, and I think there's probably also something to be said for just letting a dude just to uh, kind of run wild and mm-hmm. kind of do what they want. Uh, Let that Yoshio mania run wild on you, <laughs> Brother, um, oh yeah, hey, that worked because we're actually brothers. Uh, oh, it's nice to do a real high five and not just do the bit where I'm in my room and I'll sometimes pretend to do a high five, but yeah. you're not there. So uh-huh. if anyone else was in the room, it would just look like I'm waving my arm around, right? I also now I do feel bad for the spot on the wall I stare at that mm-hmm. I sort of I feel like it's lonely now, like mm-hmm. it's being neglected for this recording. <laughs> um, yeah, so, um, normally. We'll go through our five stars. Yeah. And we'll say like, hey man, what have you been up to this week? Give me that first star. Right. The answer is like, nothing. Just, guys, normally I feel like we dig deep and we find some stuff to talk about. I had a very pleasant week. Oh, it was great. My classes are going well. Uh, I feel like my freshmen have had kind of a turnaround, which is a real delight. Um, I just, I didn't do anything. Anything. I right. nothing. It was a satisfying life nothing. week. Nothing. Yeah. That had no things that are interesting in conversation. I had a very pleasant dinner with I we had some dinner guests on Friday. Mm-hmm. That's it, man. My my replay of Breath of the Wild is going nicely in right. master mode. I'm digging this polar seltzer that I'm drinking. It's very nice. Yeah. It's orange vanilla flavored. It's great. It's like a creamsicle, but refreshing. You know, that's that's what I always think of when I think of a creamsicle, is what could possibly be more refreshing than a creamsicle. That's why I, that's why I specified that, because you wouldn't normally, but it is it does taste like a creamsicle, and it is refreshing. It's actually kind of what I imagine a uh, frobscottle tasting like. That is not a word that means anything to me. You, did you never read the BFG? You know, I actually never did read the BFG. You should... You should, it's very good. I believe you. It's one of those things where, like, you know, if there's a pile of ten books, like, from, that were all sitting in the same pile when you were growing up, I read eight of them, and I'm yeah, sure and you, you also read eight, get, but right. it might not have been a full You just didn't crossover. get around to the last one. Yeah, uh, no, BFG, it's Roll Doll, it's fantastic. They I, did a movie, um, it did very poorly... Although as the as a it was pretty good. It was a fairly faithful adaptation. Mm-hmm. There was they did like they had to make it weirder. Well, sure. For some reason, which I don't get. Like Roald Dahl's already the world's most scrum diddly umptious storyteller. Like you don't mm-hmm. need to mess with it that hard. But um that has nothing to do with but again, I just a lovely week, but nothing yeah. You know my favorite Roald Dahl book was growing up? It was it was that collection of six short stories. Oh my gosh. Um, um the wonderful story of Henry Sugar and well, it's seven, well, seven stories because it's yeah, yeah. Henry and Sugar six, and six more. more. I also love the giraffe and the Pelly in me. Ah, very good one. Yeah, big fan, big Man, fan. Dull talk. 
<laughs> we probably don't need a stinger for that. I don't know if we're going to get back around to repeats on Dull Talk. Dull Talk. Dull Talk. Um, and also, it's confusing if you don't uh, lead in with rolled doll talk. It's, yeah, RD talk. Um, so, anyways, so we don't God, we don't have five stars today. Yeah. So I I thought this would be a good opportunity, Dave. We're in the same room. We don't yeah. have five stars. Let's have a business meeting. Let's do have a business meeting. We've never had one. Mm-hmm. So here's our inaugural business meeting. Yes. I think I actually just recently found this out. This is the inaugural one. And number two is, is the, the first annual. Yes. I just assumed that you went like inaugural and then second annual. Ah. That's not how apparently how it... Yeah. See, I didn't know. So, so our, this is our inaugural business meeting. And man, our numbers... They're not bad. Okay, so here's the thing. But they could be better. So we we are now in our fifth season. God, these numbers gotta get up. Right. I should have a clip. I've been looking. At, I've been looking at my charts. Yeah. There's, there's, charts. My, here, there's my papers. Yeah. Thank you. Um. And listen, do more people listen to us than when I first started? Uh, with this. Yes. Did I think they yeah. would ever listen to us? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Because people who are not like. Us. Like us and people we know directly in real life. Listen uh, to the show. Listen Thank to you. And at least claim to enjoy the show. So that's great. But as we're going into our fifth season, Dave, I really feel like we should be more popular. Especially since we are the greatest show on earth. Yeah. I. Yeah. It's a sh- cry and shame. Um, let's get it in gear. Yes. I want to get it in gear. Yeah. So I've... I got a couple of ideas to throw at you, a couple of business strategies. Okay. And I want to see what we think we can do with them. Okay. So I haven't seen this chart yet. You you hit me with it. What's okay. Your... Idea number one. What if, because all the popular podcasts all read advertisements. Okay. You know, they're yes. all sponsored. Yeah. Uh-huh. And if you listen to any other podcasts, either they are all like Patreon funded or right. they are all... Um, Sponsored by, but yeah, whoever you know, companies. Yeah. You got your Meandies, you got your Caspers, you got your Lindas, you mm. got your Leases. Your Lindas, Linda dot com. It's a uh, now I think it's called LinkedIn Learning. Oh, Are you not okay. With Linda dot com. No, if you want to learn how to use Excel, you got to get on Linda dot com. Oh, okay. Free uh, courses through your actually you can a lot of times you can get it through your local public library. Oh, that's, that's just cool. a regular old PSA for you. So here's what I'm thinking: since a lot of these podcasts are sponsored. They're not going to be able to keep track of everyone that they have paperwork with, right? Right. So what if we just start reading? We just go for it. We just start reading ads. It can't be hard to get the ad copy because all podcasts just use the same ad copy. So how aspirational are we going to be with this? Like, are we going to go, I think, listen, everybody else is already doing me undies Mm -hmm. and Linda's and stuff. If we're going to get it in gear, we should just go, just just go for it, right? Other people are advertising Linda's, which does Excel. Mm-hmm. Let's, Microsoft. So you just want to start reading a commercial for Microsoft Windows? Let's just do, yeah, let's do ads for the, the let's not mess with these middle things. If we're going for it, let's just do it. Okay, so the idea right? here is that we, we read an ad for Microsoft. Right. And then Microsoft hears it. And says, "Oh man, I who, forgot. I forgot. Who, who, right? Who, who paid, paid for this? that ad? Right? And then after a while, we just send them an invoice. Right? Now, I think this whole plan hinges on them not listening to this episode specifically. We're sort right. of putting out trade secrets here. Okay, so people who are listening to this episode don't this let. Is, yeah, don't let Microsoft know about this one. By listening to our business meeting, you have agreed to confidentiality. Yeah. So." The next couple of minutes is all we're coming so, for okay. you. So okay, if we run into any yeah. problems with this, so we could do Microsoft. We could do uh, Tiffany's, as in breakfast at. Yeah, yeah, Tiffany and Co. Tiffany They're a big and one. Co. They're big. 
They're big. They you know sell, they got money to throw around. You know they got money to throw around. They sell Lux jewelry, which I feel like is very on brand for us. Uh huh. Uh huh. Um, who else could we do? We could do bear pancakes. Kodiak, okay. Kodiak bear pancakes. I think they are probably a market leader in the bear pancake <laughs> in the segment. The bear camp pancake community. Yeah. So let's just let's just spitball, man. Let's just throw a few of these out. Um, okay, I'll I'll go first. Okay. So uh, really excited. This episode two of uh, Super Sentai Brothers is brought to you by Kodiak Bear Pancakes, mm-hmm. strong like bear. Eat pancake, make strong. Make strong like bear. Kodiak bear pancake. Now, can we throw something in there that makes it clear that you're doing a caveman thing? Because I feel like this works better. That I feel like that's on Mark. That's on producer Mark. That I feel like that's okay. going to come in the back end. There should be like some jungle noises and uh, and and like a. You know, like a dinosaur, maybe I'm, in the I'm background. definitely going to need a... No, but not a jungle. It needs to be... It's like a frozen north coat. It's a Kodiak. Okay. Right? So we need to hear, like, chirping in the background, and then, like, a bear roar, and then, like, Kodiak strong like bear. Right. Eat I, bear pancake. I feel like a dinosaur is going to really make the audio pop a little bit better. hmm And listen, we don't need to go into the specifics of which dinosaurs were where. There's got to be a, a bear dinosaur. Not like a bear that has scales, but just like a a bear had to exist at that time, right? Maybe. Just like a giant, a very, very large bear, I feel like. So, um... Anyway, we'll get our paleontologists on that on one. On that one. So, Matt, what's... Unless you want to throw out another one, do you want to do one? Um, man. Let's do an ad for... You guys, you guys like spreadsheets? Hey, listen. I know that other... Co- other other podcasts, they're trying to sell you regular bed sheets, right? You got Brook Linen. That's something that I hear advertised a lot. Uh-huh. But other than bed sheets, you know what my favorite kind of sheet is? Spreadsheets. The spread kind. Yeah, you, you did need Microsoft say, Excel. You do. <laughs> you gotta buy it, and you know what? If you get an Excel, just get all the windows. Just get the whole thing. Listen, the Microsoft Office Suite. Is it boring? Sure. But it's boring because everyone's got it, and you should get it too if you don't already have it, which you might, but if you don't, you ought to, Microsoft. Oh, actually, this is a genuine PSA. If you are a teacher, they will give you Microsoft Office Suite for free. I feel like that is not... I feel like getting that information out there is not going to convince Microsoft to pay us. And is not going to get us it's in the about public expo- eye It's about exposure, Matt. It's, it's about, about exposure. exposure. Everybody, every little bit helps, even if you are one of the world's largest companies. Matt, what's number two? Hit me with this second idea. Okay, Dave. Uh, number two is that we could pretend, we could have a segment on our show okay. where we could pretend that we get tons of listener questions. Okay. Are from these... all of our, like, not just people who listen to the show and enjoy it. But who are, like, excited about engaging with us online. Okay, so are they excited about, are they excited about, like, the Dave World lifestyle brand? Mm -hmm. Are they interested in us personally? Do they want to date you? Um, They can't date me, I'm married. Right, no. I mean, these are just, these are fans of the show. Okay. Right? Okay. So, Do they have Sentai questions? Some of them might. All right. So, you know, we could have a segment at the end of our show and be like, hey... We're talking about episode nine today. It's got some stuff in it. If you've watched it, if you have questions about this that you want to ask us ahead of time, then oh, we'll okay. answer so it at the end would, of the show. Got it, got it, got and it. And then at the end, we'll be like, hey, we got a question from listener and friend of the show, Carl. Our old friend Carl. Our old friend Carl. Who's always trying to get a hold of us. You need to make, we would need to make up Twitter handles for mm-hmm. these people. At Carl. At Carl. <laughs> somebody's, <laughs> no, see that's too, somebody's gotta be, there's multiple there's spellings, already gotta be a Carl. There's mar- multiple spellings of Carl, Dave, that's gonna throw a little bit of ambiguity into yeah. it. Yeah, so it could be like, at Carl's Jr., but not the restaurant, I'm, my dad is actually named Carl. Okay. Carl the second. <laughs> Carl the second is that's a guy. So like, let's just okay. Let me hit you with a few questions, Matt. Sure. Um, 
Okay, Matt. So we well, got can, a couple of questions. They here. don't have to be about the episode. They can be about right. whatever. Yeah, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna throw these at you. Mm-hmm. And we're just a lot of this is um, testing, so you guys are sort of a test audience for this. Yeah. So if any of these are kind of popping you're also for the you, real audience for this. So. Right. <laughs> if any of these are sort of popping for you, let us know, and then we can kind of. And then also, actually, again, if you're listening to this episode, you're in on this, right? You're part of the team now. Mm-hmm. We're gonna need you to help to help push this. You're the street team. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. Um, so, Matt, I'm gonna hit you with a couple of these real quick. Sure, go for it. Open book. Yeah. So, Matt, what uh, would you say is the strength of uh, Yoshio Urasawa? Not just as a writer, but as almost a Sentai auteur. Uh, that one comes from Carl, actually. Our buddy Carl. Uh, Twitter handle, Carl's Jr., but not the restaurant. My dad's actual name is Carl. Okay, so thank you, Carl, for that question. I think that one of the great things about Yoshio Urasawa is that... And frankly, it's something that we talked about, we've touched on before... It's not just that I like the direction that he's able to take the show. It's that since he's had such a long, uninterrupted streak, you really not only get a chance to feel the characters and the world that he's built, but also the vibe of it, you know? You know, that is actually a really good point. And I think, Carl, there's a really... When you said, not just as an author, but as an auteur, mm-hmm. that is that is something you get yeah. when somebody has their hands on... Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of different episodes. Yeah. Also, the strength of him as an author, the jokes are good. The jokes are very, very That's funny. That's the thing yeah. about the jokes in Car Ranger is that, like, it would be easy for the jokes not to be good, but the jokes but are good. But they are good. very good. Um, okay, Matt. So we've got another... We, we don't want to have a ton. We've got a pile of questions, guys. Uh, yeah. Like every week. We try to get to, the, to a handful. Um, so this one is from... Uh, amazing. From the estate of Roald Dahl... Asking why you haven't made time to read the BFG. You know... Um, I'm not going to read the whole thing. They're actually sort of weirdly aggressive about it. Weirdly aggressive and potentially litigious? <laughs> yeah, but they do want to know why you haven't read this very, very good book. I was busy rereading all the other good Roald Dahl books. I think that's a really solid answer. Yeah, very political. Yeah. Um, I mean, not very tactful. Politic. Politic, Politic not yeah. political. And uh here's the last one. Uh we normally again we only normally have time for two. This one just jumped out at me. Matt, this is from a uh a young lady named Susan and she just says, "Will you date me?" I assume that's for you cuz I'm married, so I can't. Well, you know, um that's that's a great question, Susan. Um, I feel like that's the sort of thing we're going to have to talk about offline. Uh, and when I say offline, I mean like the version of offline that gets used in meetings that actually does still mean online, but not in the course of this conversation. Got it. Okay. Well, I think, again, <laughs> keep those questions coming, guys. We'd love to hear from you. That's all we've got time for today. Okay. Now, I should I should say, um, it's possible that we are getting more questions than I see because... We have an email address, and I want to be honest about something. I check that email address. Okay, I was just going to say, but, I don't know the password. You do. I assume well, you're the one who checks it. Here's the thing. Literally every time I check it, I have to reset the password because it's been that long since I've looked at it. I okay, look at it. So when you say you check it, I that's did, kind of in air quotes. I mean, I looked at it the other day. Which I said out loud because I literally did air quotes. Yeah. As I, yeah. Uh, I did look at it the other day. Uh, to answer the one question we get... We're probably never doing Zoo Ranger. Yeah, we probably won't ever do Zoo Ranger. Um, we can talk about that in more detail if you are interested. But that is the actual answer to a real question that we get semi-consistently. <laughs> we could have just done this and not had a weird thing where you pretended there was someone who wanted to date me. Um, we just listen. We're we're trying things out. Um, we tried. Now- we tried to do the first episode of Zoo Ranger twice. Each time uh, the file got corrupted. And now... And we decided that that was it. And also, other people talk about Gear Ranger. Fewer people talk about Car Ranger. Yeah, so uh, Matt, what is your, what's your what do you got? Third idea is actually semi-related to the second idea. So we don't have to spend as much time on it. We should pretend that we have a thriving subreddit. I don't know what that means, but I know that those words are used in that order sometimes to talk about, like... A community of people online who talk about a podcast. Now, I want to be clear about something. I want people to think we have a thriving subreddit. I do not want us to have a thriving subreddit. The internet's a bad place. 
don't go on it too much. Yeah, 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 yeah. This and is not Reddit. Me. Yeah, I'm not encouraging you to spend more time on Reddit. I'm encouraging you to try to convince people that we are the sort of show that has a thriving subreddit so that we can, like, get more people in our net. Yeah, uh-huh. That's, uh... This is a trick. This one's right, just a trick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're moving now from... Well, I guess these are all, like, tricks and now, lies. Now, the downside of this is, like, this is super easy to verify that it's not true. Yeah, but man, listen, like I said, I listen to a lot of shows that say they have a subreddit. I have never been on any of them. Okay, good point, good point. So maybe this is only a trick for for the people that hear the words thriving subreddit are like, oh, that must mean, yeah. but don't actually and use And honestly, Reddit. the people who are g- going to complain about it are the people who are on Reddit. And the but people, we are not on Reddit. But we're not so, on there, so we're so never going to see fine. those complaints. Yeah. And the people that we're going to trick with this also aren't on Reddit, so they're never going to hear the fact checkers. There you go. Um, Obfuscation day. No, this is brilliant. I love it. So what's uh, what else you got? Uh, number four, this is going to be a little trickier. Okay. Because the fourth idea is that we pretend that our show is about a more popular topic than Super Sentai. Now, wait. Do... Okay. Do you mean we pretend that our show is about, like, hockey, and then we, like, quick switch on people that it's actually about Gekuso Sentai Car Ranger, or are you saying we pretend that Gekuso Sentai Car Ranger is a wildly popular topic for a much broader audience? Okay, now both of those, I think, are interesting. The second one sounds more doable. The first one is what I was talking about. Okay. The first one is that we pretend that this is a show about Fortnite, and then we just make it kind of ambiguous as to the specifics of what we're talking about. So the Fortnite people who are just streaming any old thing will be like, yeah, this might be Fortnite. Now, the problem with this is I don't know what Fortnite is. It's well, it's a game. I've Are, do played you it. I don't we... understand it. Okay, on a so you're saying level. we like we throw out some Google tag, like some Google key, hot words, right? Hot words, and then we sort of beat and switch. Exactly. Like you showed up for Fortnite. Now, now, and then the by only... the time you realize it's not Fortnite, or like it might not be Fortnite, but you're still not you're entirely already sure. engaged. You're already in. Yeah. Because at that point, you're interested in this thriving subreddit. Right. So here's the problem with that, Matt. I. I don't know enough about things that are popular that are far enough outside the scope. Like, okay, so if you imagine a Venn diagram, right? And, like, the people who would be interested in a Super Sentai podcast, I am pretty knowledgeable about a bunch of things that fall, like, within a shared spectrum of that Venn diagram with Super Mm -hmm. Sentai. Yeah. So, like, I know a fair amount about anime, and I know a lot about comic books. Right. And and things like that. And I do know a lot about Star Wars. And the last thing I want in my life is to in any way be related to online discourse about Star Wars. Yeah, so, like, I do know, like, I know a lot about Star Wars. And then, like, I have a fair amount of professional knowledge. Like, you know, I have a degree in literature, you have a degree in history. Um... But I feel like if you're interested in comic books, you'd probably already be interested in a Super Sentai, kind of. But like, I don't even I don't know enough about the NHL to bait and switch someone. I would be like Red Wings, Stanley Cup. Okay, but what? Like if that's we, okay. all I've got. What if we do this very Pittsburgh simple. Penguins? What if we do this very simply, Dave? What if we say... I'm genuinely trying to remember if I know any more hockey teams than the Red Wings and the Pittsburgh Penguins. There's a team called the Sharks. There's a team called, like, the Kings, I think, in Las Vegas. Uh, the Knights. Are, I believe, the, the Golden Knights. The Golden Knights. If I'm not mistaken, it's a new um, team. Now, this is a fun thing. Maybe this can be a star. That's... Dave tries to know hockey games. <laughs> that's... That's kind of what I got. I know the Penguins and the Sharks and the... I didn't know the Golden Knights. I thought they were the Kings. Uh, I'm just saying, I don't know if this is a viable plan. Okay, what if we just change the show art? We don't change the name of the show, but we change, like, the, the logo image to just a picture of the Avengers and have it say, Podcast about Marvel Cinematic Universe, The Avengers. Okay. Come here. 
And then and when then people you click, click on it, it it'll be like they Super Sentai. The... They're like, when is the, when are they right. going to start talking about the Avengers? When when's the exclusive interview? Right, right, with, right. With one of the Chris's. Right. When are they going to talk to Groot? Right. So we get through. They're like, man, I gotta hear. I gotta hear. Is they just, are they just going to do the Groot voice? Or are they going to use words? Right. Um. But then by the time they get through the five stars. They're already hooked. Yeah. No, I like that. That, and would, that would work really well. They're using our special link code to try to buy Microsoft Excel. There you go. Um, Synergy between these ideas. Or we could also, again, we could just talk about Car Ranger as though like everybody's talking about it. And then you listen to the show. I and do then when you like, listen, like when you listen to it, you're like, oh, dude, like everybody seems to be talking about this Car Ranger. Dave, that is kind of what we already do. Okay, a little bit. Yeah, 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 yeah. We could just go bigger, though. Yeah. Right? We could be like, dude, did you hear like Tom Brokaw was talking about Car Ranger the other day? It was crazy. Ah, uh, yes. The, the man with his finger on the pulse of a nation. Tom Brokaw. <laughs> just <laughs> okay. Honestly, my first name <laughs> was to say Katie Couric, and I was like, that doesn't seem. I'm gonna go with Brokaw. <laughs> Um, all right, what's your uh, last? We're actually, we've run astonishingly long on these. On this, these very good ideas. On this very dumb joke. <laughs> what's our, what's your fifth idea? Dude, the fifth idea is we just, like, we just, you and I do the format of a different show that's already more popular. Now, okay, do we rename it? Do we sort of, like, fake out? Do we say, like... I welcome, mean, I, I used to have an idea of like, doing a welcome show. welcome to just my brother and me. Hey, man, some people, if they don't finish typing it into Google, they're like, my brother and, sure, that sounds right. <laughs> my Super Sentai brother and me? Is that what you're going to go with? What we, like, if we do sort of a um, Asylum Super films, Sentai Brothers on the Line. Like Asylum Films version of other podcasts. Oh, okay. You know, like it, we're, yeah. we're the Atlantic, or the Atlantic Rim to their Pacific Rim. Got it. Okay. And if you just look at it, like, sideways and click on it real quickly, like, you might end up in a podcast where, like, why did I, why did I download this? But again, by that by point. By the time, yeah. Now, and also, we did watch... All of Atlantic. Well, we watched the we watched the Mystery Science. We Theater watched the Mystery Science Atlantic Theater of Atlantic Rim. Rim. Gosh, that was a very very bad movie. Uh, well, I think that's the whole point, right? Yeah. So Matt, I think those are all brilliant ideas. Yeah. Guys, just let us know which are the ones you. And if you want to help, sure. Again, you guys are all part of the street team now. Yeah. Let's make it happen. Let's generate some buzz. Yeah. 2019. 2019. 2019 is the year that we uh, trick our way into popularity, Dave. Um. <laughs> Speaking of things that are wildly popular that everyone loves, um, episode nine of Geki So Sentai Car I just, Ranger. I just heard Brokaw talking about it. <laughs> the Broke! <laughs> it's called The U-Turn to the Stars. We're going to go watch it, and we will be right back. Okay, welcome back. So, we have just finished watching episode nine of Geki So Sentai Car Ranger. A U-Turn to the Stars... Um, I feel like maybe it's called a U-turn to the stars because it gets like weirdly turned around about halfway through the episode. It, it yeah, this is a weird one, and uh, we did get some great questions about this one. Um, <laughs> so we will we'll kind of try and hit those at the end. So the episode starts off, and it's it's BB Donpa again, yes. except he's blonde now. So he went Super Saiyan or something. And well, that makes sense because he also went giant. True. So he's giant. And we and do know that's something that Saiyans can do. But I think they turn into an ape when I, they do yeah, it. Yeah, they're like a monkey. They're like a crazy monkey person. Um, so it's BB Donpa. And like it's happening very fast. Like he's already giant. Mm-hmm. We see Dapu. He's like, oh, use RV Robo. They just like bust out RV Robo. They did the, they do the combination. Yeah. And all um, of this feels very legit to me because at the end of the episode where BB Donpa was defeated... He was not killed, right? Like, he was able to survive and make his way back to Barbaria. Oh, that's right! I totally forgot about yeah. that. So I'm like, oh, wow. Like, they're going back to, like, wrap up the story of B.B. Dampa. Well, you know, they do... Sometimes we will see episodes where they will just, like, jump in for, yeah, for whatever reason. Absolutely. Um, I genuinely assumed that they just wanted to, like, start this one with a bang mm-hmm. and were hoping that we would not notice that it was just B.B. Dampa again. So they take out BB Donpa. Um, turns out it was all a dream. It was a dream. None of this. None of this is actually happening. It's Kiyosuke. He's sitting in like the business office of Pegasus Motors, and he's just kind of like, oh, 
And then he like falls back asleep. Mm-hmm. So the, the the boss wanders over and taps him on the shoulders like, hey, uh, Kyosuke, you have to wake up now. Kyosuke wakes up, but in waking up is still sort of like in Red Racer mode. Yeah. And he's sitting on a swivel chair. And so he like mimes having like being rv robo he's got a pen this, oh he's got, he's a, got, pen. got a pen in his hand yeah and, like he spins around in his chair and pretends to cut the boss in half and the boss just goes with it yeah for like two or three seconds and what's great about it is at first it seems like he's just playing along with this goofy thing that kiyosuke is doing and then he has a moment he like shakes his head and you realize that he was not playing along like willingly he just somehow got like caught up in the moment right now all of this of course goes back to the first episode where or maybe it was the the second episode of the show where dapu hit the boss on the head with a hammer five times oh and yeah so every, i am still concerned that like he did lasting damage yeah that is problematic i hadn't thought about that actually so um, I assume that that's not the case no, because that would be a be tremendous funny. bummer. But so um, so they just start fighting. Like yeah. he wakes him up, and the president is like, "Why are you asleep? Like you're at work. This is your job. You can't be asleep here." Um, and they start fighting, and they have like a little stare down. And Kyosuke looks at the president and is like, "You're fired." <laughs> and then we go downstairs. And we see the president, like, tromping down the stairs angrily. He's like, I can't believe this. Who would even want to work at a company like this anyways? Like, I can't believe... I'm taking my talents elsewhere. Right. And he gets all the way down the stairs. I love the president. He gets all the way down the stairs, stops for a moment, and is like, wait a second. (laughs) I own this company. I own this company. And he charges back upstairs. And then we hear him yell, you're fired. And then Kosuke comes charging down the stairs and says the exact same thing. It's, it's like, a very good moment. It's very well done. So, like, the other four are sitting there working on cars or, you know, doing whatever. And Kyosuke is storming off. He's like, now, don't you guys try to stop me this time. This time, I'm really leaving. I'm really quitting. Don't stop me. If you want to stop me, I'll be at the park. But don't stop me. But don't, I'm at, done. But don't stop me at the park where I'm going to be if you need to find me to stop me. But don't do but. it. <laughs> <laughs> It's very good. <laughs> so we go, we go from there to the park, and uh, and Kyosuke is like, no, we actually do find out why he's kind of irritated. And this is this is sort of legit. He's like, dude, I was hired as a test driver. That's where my skill set is. I'm a great driver. I should not be fixing cars. Like that's oh, because we went downstairs. Everybody's working on fixing cars except um, Naoki. No, um, Yoko. Yoko, yeah. Um, everybody is fixing cars except Yoko. And uh, I was like, yeah, it's okay. That's actually semi-legit, dude. You're not, that's not in your, your scope. You, right. You should be. Like, that is not in your job description. It is reasonable, but you know, like, it's a small company. People pitch in. But, and he's just very mad about it. Yeah. So he's at this park and he's, you know, like, forlornly throwing stones into the water. Perfect. It's a perfect thing to do when you're sad. Uh, just throw rocks at water. So good. Um, and then all of a sudden, Dapu is standing next to him. And he's got like a burger and a Coke. Yeah. I, where did he, where does he get a burger? Dave, Inventor Grotch comes down to earth every... And buys Emu Yukon, like, Yeah, like no, people just point. don't register at this point that monster, like the aliens are around. This has got to be like some White Wolf style, like they project a field where like you don't notice somehow. We're talking about the White Wolf World of Darkness role yeah, playing yeah, games. Yeah. So, um, yeah, like everybody's just like it could, it must just be a person in a in a horrifying mask. That's who <laughs> has bought this hamburger. So Dabu is talking to him. He's like, "Oh, like you want to be a racer? Like when like, I, I get it. Like I get it. I also wanted to be a racer." I was inspired in my love of the race by the great space racer, the King of Speed, Max. First of all, I love that he's the King of Speed. Second yes. of all, I love that his name is Max. Like that he doesn't have a ridiculous name. Like his yeah. name is just Max. Um, so, and then Dap was like, we all looked up to him. And then he vanished. Um, so we see... Max, this is a flashback. We see Max. Max looks cool. Max by looks the way. totally rad. Um, Max just looks like imagine. He, lo- he looks like the King of Speed 
from space. Like that is yeah. what he looks like. He's like sleek. He's got like a rad helmet. Um, he's got some like stuff written on him and sort of like a futuristic NASCAR sort of yeah, way. Yeah, like it's he's he's baller. So we see him. He's like holding a trophy with like two other guys that he's clearly just beaten in a race. And all the kids of space. Mm-hmm. All the space kids. All the space kids. Which is a phrase that Dapu uses repeatedly. It's mm-hmm. like me and all the space kids. I just, I don't know why I'm deeply tickled by just the term. Like, yeah, space kids. All of them. Just all of them. All the, all the kids in space. Not from planets, from space. Yeah. Because Earth is where people live. Earth is Earth, and then everything Earth is, else is space. Just everything else in the whole galaxy, just space. Um, <laughs> it's like, we and all the other space kids, we super looked up to him, and then he just disappeared. And, and, and Kyrus goes like, oh, he disappeared. What happened? And he's... And, it wasn't like a mystery. Yeah. He got in a car crash. Okay. So he's in a race in space. For some reason, they're in cars, and the cars well, have... Well, they're like in flying space cars. There yeah. aren't like wheels on the cars. No, there are wheels on the cars. Like, okay. there are definitely... They're not on a road. They're not on a road, but there are definitely... This is why I'm at... There's wheels on these cars. I don't understand why, but there are. And then, Max just drives headlong in... Sorry, when Matt says they're in, they're not on a road. They're just in deep space, in the void of space, in the void of space, racing in a straight line towards n- uh, the finish line. I right. would assume there's no reference point for any of this. And then Max, he separates from the rest of the pack and then just crashes into what appears to be a giant vending machine that's just floating in space. Yes. I, it's, it's just like a Coke machine. Now, it's not Coke, but like... Now, Dave, there are a few explanations as to what could have happened here. I refuse to accept any of them. Well, here's the good one. That was the corpse of vending machine dimension from Jetman, who got hit so hard by the people, by I, the Jetman. I've changed my mind. I do accept <laughs> that. Uh, yeah, no. And he was just like floating through just space. Just floating in space. That's the okay. That is the only one that I I would accept. So, so Max crashes, Max and everyone crashes. is heartbroken. Everyone is heartbroken, and I am reminded actually that Dapu is a child. Yes, because he is now. We flash back. We're back to the present. And Dapu is just weeping over, like, the sudden death of his hero. Yeah. Now, I want you all to remember that Dapu's head is just, like, a barely articulated rubber mask. Yeah. So when Dave says that Dapu is crying, he means that there are just, like, hoses attached to the insides of the eye sockets of this mask. And they just kind of They're just, like, dribbling water out. It's It's... very upsetting. Yeah. (laughs) Because he, he doesn't blink. It doesn't, like, come out the sides of his eyes. It's just, like, leaking from the very center. Right. Not the center of the bulb, like, the center of the bottom of his like, eye. like, you know how when you it see would a... Be, <laughs> like, you know what, how you see, like, when a person just, cry? If it was just coming out of, like, his actual <laughs> eyeball. <laughs> like, when you see a human being cry... It's not like they look like they always look, but water is coming out of their right. eyes. Right, just like, everybody looks ugly. You know, like your face contorts. Dapu's face cannot contort. It's, yeah, it's not articulated <laughs> enough. So it's just he just is there, and then there's water out of his face. Yeah. So he's very upset. He, like, turns around and gives Kyosuke his burger and drink, and is like, you can have these, and just wanders away. I don't, like... They failed. Chekhov would be furious. I have no idea why that burger and drink were in this scene. Like, he showed up with them. He doesn't eat them. He just holds them and then is sad and then gives them to Kyosuke, who also doesn't eat them, and then they never come back. Maybe maybe the actor who plays Dapu was, like, on his lunch break, and they were like, dude, you've got to go. Your scene is shooting right now. And And they just, like, threw the head on him and pushed him on screen. I do. I don't know. Like this burger and drink is making me angry because it's just like it's there for no reason. Um, uh, so okay, we, so okay. We, we we cut to Barbarian. Yeah, and Zanet is sad. She's like irritated at the yeah, bar. Sad, irritated. irritated. I was gonna say inconsolable. It's not quite that. She's just yeah. uh, pissed. And President Guinan was like, "Oh, Zanet, like what's wrong?" And she's like, "Well, I should not have let KK." 
the KK Esu, mm-hmm. who is their washer. Yes. She's like, I let KK Esu wash my car, and now it's like ruined. Yeah. Well, she doesn't say it's ruined. She just says it was a terrible idea to let him wash the car. Because what happens, we see in a flashback, is that KK Esu was like cleaning the outside of the car, and then. He was like reaching inside of it because it's like this pink convertible. Yeah. And he's reaching inside of it to try to like, you know, clean out the footwells and stuff. But his hand accidentally hits the key, which was in the accelerator. And in then, ignition. In the ignition. Yeah, sorry. And then he falls against like the gear shift. And so the car is on and goes into gear. But since it's like a... Like a whacked like out... Like a bozo like space car, it just like turns into pink energy and disappears. Yeah. And so, like, now Zanet's car is gone. Um, we, <laughs> we see we see Zelmoda and Grotch, and Zelmoda's just like, oh my gosh, everybody here is such an idiot. And then Grotch is like, oh, <laughs> that's super funny. They are. And Zelmoda's like, I meant you too. You're also. <laughs> right. All of you are stupid. You're all stupid, including you and Venner Grotch. And then that's the end of that scene. Yeah. There's nothing else there. <laughs> It's just a bad working environment just, for Inventor Grotch. Yeah, garage. just a real toxic, just a real toxic workplace. Um, so, so Zalmoda's car arrives on Earth, or I'm sorry, Zanet's car arrives on Earth, and uh, KK Esu is just like, I need to get back to Barbarian because I don't know what to do now. Right, this is not a good place for me. And he's like, well, the only way I can get back is to like use this car to drive back. And he starts up the car. He's like, oh, man, I don't know how to drive like, this is at real, all. This is real bad. So as he's he's just like driving around like a knucklehead, and uh, Kyosuke runs out, and he sees him. And he's like, oh, my gosh, Bozok. Everybody, Bozok. And then he uh, mm-hmm. henshins. And, well, he doesn't henshin yet, sorry. There is a moment where where KKSU is like driving in like very like a very lazy zigzag down the street at like 15 miles an hour. Mm-hmm. And then we see Kyosuke like standing. In, it's like the scene from um, Austin Powers where there's like the steamroller. Steam roller. Yeah, what's approaching him? He's like, no. Uh, yeah, so Kyosuke like barely managed. He just like stands in the middle of the street and like jukes left and right without moving his feet for like five seconds and then dives out of the way at the very last moment. Um, and, and it's real it, tough. And the thing is, in Car Ranger. I don't know if that's just weird or if that is specifically being done as a joke. I, right, no. I think that's one of the good things about Car Ranger is there's some stuff you're like, is it, wait, is this just a kid's show and you did it that way or are you, are you goofing on this? Um, so he henshins and he summons his speeder machine and he's driving alongside KKSU. And KKSU is like, dude, I don't know what I'm doing. I can't drive. And, and, Ky- and Kyosuke's like, well, A, that's weird, but B, like, I'm trying to stop you from destroying everything. So, like, I'm a really good driver. Listen to me. Like, put both hands on the wheel, fasten your safety belt, sit up straight. Like, you know, just like some very basic, you know, like, best to driving posture tips. Like, right. Like, please, like, we can we can talk you down from this. It's okay. Just listen to me. And then he's like, oh, wait, I do know how to do this. And then... Bum, bum, bum. He has a flashback where he remembers being the Space King of Speed, Max, the super racer motorist. Yes. Uh, So, and then he like flips out and then he crashes into another vending machine. Basically. Yeah. Yeah. So then the other (laughs) Rangers arrive and KKSU is gone. And they're like, what's going on? He's like, there was a bozo. And then they run over like next to the building and he's right there. So he's... So he kind of like wakes up and he's like, wait, I am Max. Right. Like I'm not what I'm not KKSU. Right. He pulls off his like washing smock and he pulls, he pulls off what we discover now was like, not his head, but like an extra like head on top of his head. Like a helmet layer, maybe. Yeah. Like know. a helmet layer. And, uh. And we see, like, under that is, like, the head of Speed King Max, although, like, his visor is cracked yeah, and his terrible and, accent. Uh, and Red Racer's like, oh, no, this is, like, that's a real thing. Right, like, I've heard all of this the, guy. I've heard of this guy. All the space kids looked up to him. Like, Max, what happened? So, so what happened is that, so he crashes into Vending Machine Dimension. Right. And he crash lands on a planet. That was in no way, like, a Bozoke trick. 
He just spun off the road and crashed. Yeah. Like, that part is whatever. When he crashes, he crash lands on a planet. And this is a planet that happens to have Zelmoda and Groach on it. Maybe he crashes into Barbarian. I don't think we see. Yeah, it's not super clear. But he's just crash landed on a surface of a planet. And Zelmoda and Groach see him. And they're like, oh, that's weird. This guy just went got into a car accident. Hey, he's still alive. Why don't we uh, wipe his memories and make him wash our dishes? Cool, cool, cool. Let's do it. Yeah, so they do that. Uh, and Render Grotch has a forgetfulness water gun. Mm-hmm. Which, it's just a super yep. soaker that makes you forget your entire life, which is horrifying. Yeah. And uh, so then we, we go back to the present and like Max is back. He's like, racers, like you guys have saved me. Thank you so much. Like, this is awesome. Uh, and they like go to like shake hands and everything seems like it's going really well. And then the Bozok arrive mm-hmm. and they're like, hey, what'd you do with our washer? Like, Grotch, hit him, hit him with the, <laughs> give, him the exist- juice. give him the juice, give him the existentially horrifying water gun again. Yeah. Uh, so they do. And he immediately turns back into KKSU. And what's weird is that like they previously, Zelmoda and Grotch previously did not know that KKSU had originally been the speed of. The Speed King Max. Or at least they... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They just found him. They just found a guy. Which seems weird. I feel like it'd be the Reckless Driving Tribe. You would, like, keep tabs on, like, who's the king of speed Mm -hmm. in all of space. Probably. Um, Whatever. But they they look at him, and they're like, oh, wow, that's the Speed King Max. We should, like, harness his racing abilities to become evil. And so they do that. But then they don't. Yeah, they, they just zap turn him, him with the water, and he just turns into their like car wash guy. Well, again. maybe what they mean is like his, like he has like power as like the king of speed. Like he's okay, clearly that would make very sense. capable, and they're like, we'll just tell him that he's a, an evil washer, and but then he'll use his like space speed kung fu mm-hmm. for our cause, which and is it, what happens. Yes. Uh, so the racers are like trying to hold him back. They're like, no, Kekayesu, like that's not actually you. You're, you know. Dude, the Speed King Max. Um, and he does, like, a wax on, wax off move and, like, summons, like, washing energy mm-hmm. and, like, spins them around and blasts them away, which I thought was a pretty fun. That's something that this show is being really good about. Is, like, really making, keep it on theme. Yeah, keeping the monsters, like, energy attacks mm-hmm. on theme. Um, and they're doing cool stuff with, like, the energy animations. And that, that at least, is fun. Um, uh, let's see. Dapu is back. Back in the mix. He is very upset about all of he's this. He's super upset. And he's what's he's yelling at they they managed to take KKSU down. Yeah. Like after after a minute. And uh Dapu is yelling at KKSU. He's like, I can't believe this. You are my idol. I hate you. Da- he's brainwashed, bro. Okay, now that is true, but like the I feel like the best way to think of this is in terms of professional wrestling. Ah, uh, like you know, if a face turns heel, like if if the Speed King Max was like space racing John Cena, mm-hmm. and then like John Cena is your guy, you know, and then John Cena turns on somebody and like does a dastardly move, you know, like it wasn't j- like it's not like the man John right. Cena deciding to right. become which evil. John Cena would never do. Well, no, he's all about hustle, loyalty, and respect. Yeah. Um, but, like, if he did do that, children would be heartbroken. Okay. Even though, Got you. like, the man John Cena did not, like, become evil. Right. It's the, the, you know, the character got changed by Vince McMahon. Right. In, like, a weird decision. Um, although that would be a good decision, actually, I think. Not this show, though. That's a different show. Um, so I think it's like that. Like... He like even though he he's still like, all right. No, I got you. Know, you. I got you. Max yeah, no, had no sense. control over it. Dapu's emotional response because he's still a kid and this is his hero is to like reject it. Yeah. So uh, Zelmoda, maybe he's like starting to get through. Zelmoda is like no, and he like runs over. He draws his like weird playing card sword mm-hmm. and is about to kill Dapu. Right, because he thinks that if Dapu keeps talking, he's going to be able to like get Max to get his memories right. back. So he uh, he's going to go kill Dapu, but then like right before 
KK Esu like jumps back up and it's like, mm-hmm. no, I'm Max, the king of speed. And he like takes the hit, mm-hmm. he saves Dapu, uh, but he does die. Yes. So then Dapu flips out. The rest of the Rangers also kind of flip, not like flip out, but like they get, they get super angry. I'm a little surprised we didn't get an unforgivable mm-hmm. on this one. Um, and then we just go into a big fight. It's like, a big old know, fight. Zomoto uh, call, calls in the Wumpers. Um, they get Wumped. There's a cool like side fight with Kyosuke versus Zomoto where they're having like a cool sword fight. And then it's like a little, it's a little more like classic, uh, yeah. like Kurosawa style, like samurai sword fights. Kyosuke bad. manages to like do this like fainting roll out of the way, and then from his back, like stab up and stab yeah, Zomoto right. in the gut. Zomoda has, you know, we've talked about how Zomoda has too much head. Yeah. His head is too much. Mm-hmm. So Zomoda just like starts hitting Red Racer, like just headbutting him a lot. Yeah, which when you're like close and desperate makes sense. Right. Then he gets a little range and he just sort of like lowers his head and charges. Well, his head has, his head has a pointy top. Yeah. It's not like a razor blade though. No. It's just sort of like gently domed. I think maybe he's dropped his sword at this point. Yeah. Um, so he well, charges at that, but yeah. it does not work because Kyosuke whips out the piston punch. Well, and also because that's never worked. That's a terrible plan. That's why Hammerhead sucks. That is why Hammerhead yeah, sucks. The Marvel Comics like, character. Yeah, like your plan is to like run at me with your head down so you can't see anything I'm doing. Dummy. Well... And it, well, it doesn't work for Hammerhead, basically, ever. And it doesn't work for Zelmoda, because he gets pissed and punched in, the, like, the top of his head. Yeah, he gets a lot of head punches. Um, there are, like, weird cartoonish welts that pop up on his head. Yeah. And he leaves. And he, yeah, so that's it. Um, there actually is no giant monster this episode. Yeah, I mean, there was in the very beginning. In, yeah, in like, Kyosuke's Super Saiyan, dream. Super Saiyan BB Danpa. Um, uh, but that's it. Yeah, so like they all go back to where Max, if he has not already died, is like dying now. Yeah. They say like, oh, Max, like he was a true superstar. You were the best. Yeah. Um, you were the champ. Um, and then they, the next scene is just RV Robo and all the Rangers are in RV Robo, but they are holding in their giant palm Max and Dapu. Right. It's like Max's space funeral i guess um and then he gets the ending where it's there's there's a sunset and sad music and he dissolves into like into light and he like becomes one with the speed force right which Um, i feel like is something that happens in episodes that have done a lot more to like convince you that that character is like totally radical and yeah it's a big deal yeah um you know whatever i think maybe he just you have to get one in and he's like "Ah, i can't really yoshinora was like uh uh, Can't figure out where to put it. So he's just like, Max is cool. He gets it. He gets it this time. Yeah. Uh, and, and then he, that's it. Well, that's, yeah, they, they they go back. Oh, that's right. No, they go back Kiyosuke to work. Kyosuke says, like, listen, I do want to be a racer. And even though it is annoying, I will stick around at the garage because we all need to be together. And he comes back. And he walks in, and the boss is actually working on fixing a car. So I feel like the subtext of the show is that, like, Pegasus Garage is super behind on all their work. Yeah, maybe. Because the boss is just, like, put on a monkey suit and is, like, fixing a Making car. stuff happen. Like, like, late at night. And complaining about how his employees, like, just, aren't like, getting their work all the time. <laughs> um, and Kyosuke walks back in. He's like, okay, I've decided. I'm coming back. And you're fired, not me. And then they just go back into that, and that's the end of the yeah. episode. <laughs> um, so, you know, normally, Matt, we would say that that's not the end of our episode. Does does K.K. Asu go on the Creature Royale? I mean, he's got to, right? I don't know. He's not... I mean, I guess he's a creature, sort of. I mean, okay, I feel like we have other characters on the Creature Royale who are comparable. You know, like people who... Like, we're good, and then we're made to be bad, and then, like, went back into being good. You know, like, the the top of our list is a character kind of like that. Okay, I mean, okay, yeah. I don't know that I would compare Max the King of Speed to Jin the Demon Fist. Hey, listen, I'm not saying that he goes at the top of the list. I'm saying that... Characters like that are already on the list. Okay. okay like, what was you. the uh, what was the the sad child? The sad from, child robot uh, from. Well, that's G two from yeah. Jetman. I'm thinking of the sad child from uh, Kaku Ranger. Oh, um, 
who like was actually like he was a monster but he wasn't evil and then it near at the end they forced him to be evil and he turned into like a weird living N64 controller sort of uh, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, you are thinking of uh, Zakashi Warashi, who is the good, good boy. Yeah, and where's the good, good boy on our He's list? spot number 15, actually. Yeah, so like we have characters like this. I think that Max the Speed King follows a similar character arc he, to those. Yeah, he does. He's he doesn't not have as, as much pathos, definitely. Yeah, no. Well, like, by the end of the episode, I was not sad when he died. I was kind of confused and like, wait, is he okay? What's happening? Yeah. So, and then when it turned out that he was not dead and he got like the hero's send-off, it felt a little... Felt it, a little it, hollow, it, Yeah, it ran a little hollow. But So where do we... If we're going to agree to put him on the list, which I think we should... Because we've already been talking about it. Um, where do you think is a good place to start looking? Are there any other characters that fit that formula that are lower down? See, the thing about Max slash um, KKSU yeah. is that he follows the same formula as a type of monster that we really like. Like Putan and yeah. uh, Bar Reven- Revenger. Bar Revenger is like number five? Yeah. Yeah, like, five. Like this sort of like noble character who is forced into evil and then like is able to like break away from it at the end like those are some of our favorite characters yeah except that like max just he's just not like we didn't get enough time with him yeah or the episode wasn't focused enough. i think it was just that it was a weird episode because like we only had episode one episode with like puton yeah. We only had one episode with Baro Baro Revenger. Or like um uh what was his name? Media Magician? Yeah. From Die Ranger. That's another one where like that that one was a little different. Yeah. Um and he actually I think also had a he may have had a two parter. Might have done. Um, um But what what's another character that's like further down the list that has a similar uh, arc uh, that we can okay. kinda like bounce off of to at least get a good starting point? Um Fortune What about Lieutenant Shiryu? Lieutenant Shiryu. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so Lieutenant Shiryu. He is a he's a pretty minor character. He doesn't mm-hmm. have much of an arc. He is seems like he's evil at first, and then it turns out that he's actually helping um Kak. What's the Dire Ranger's boss's name? Doshikaku. Doshikaku. Thank you. Doshikaku. I was saying Kaku, and then I was like, no, it's Kaku Rangers. Doshikaku. Yeah. So I think Lieutenant Shiryu is actually a very... I think that's good, because Max also, like, Lieutenant Shiryu and Max are both shown to have been characters who existed prior to episode one. Right, but like, we don't get a whole lot. So if that's our starting spot, um, I think I would go above Lieutenant Shiryu. There's a lot of pathos in Lieutenant Shiryu. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I actually am forgetting. He has like a really big loyalty arc at the end, and he's around for a couple episodes. Yeah, but okay. right below Lieutenant Shiryu, you got Bara Hungry, uh, Dara Radara, Dara Dara, Dara Dara, and uh, Mirror Master. Or Master Mirror, Master rather. Mirror, and then Pachinko Master. I would go... Well, I definitely like him better than YY Bingo. Well, no. I don't like him as well as YY Bingo and YY Gonza. Ah, uh, no, I do. I do. That's tough. I'm going to say... They're actually actually very similar They're very characters. similar. I'm actually going mean, to say... Just because they're both, like, race-focused. They're both racing-focused. Uh-huh. That's I think we're going to see that a lot. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> there are, there are racing-focused characters who have a degree of pathos whether it is like familial revenge or, or yeah. you know like seeking to break yourself free of the control of evil so i would say just above yy bingo and yy gonza and just below pachinko master yeah okay i think okay. that works for me so that is going to put them at the new number which keep just missing it the new number 70 yep uh, and that then, that finally is going to do it for another episode of Licensed to Car Ranger. Uh, before we get out of here, I would like to remind you all that you can email the show at Super Sentai Brothers. If I do not respond to that email, uh, as aforementioned, I'm sorry, I'm bad at checking it, but I do read them eventually. Um, if you want to check out the things that we're talking about on Twitter or get updates on future episodes, we are on Twitter at Super Sentai Bros. If you like the show, and I hope that you do, Please remember that shining in the iTunes review section, there are five stars. Give us ratings and reviews on Apple Podcasts, 
wherever it is that you find the show. We're on something called Player FM now. I don't cool. know what that is, but we're on it. Nice. Um, the, the Super Zentai Brothers are a production of Retrograde Orbit Radio. If you would like to listen to any of the other great Retrograde Orbit Radio shows, you can do that all at RetrogradeOrbitRadio.com. Once again, we are the Super Sentai Brothers. I'm Matt. I'm Dave. And we'll see you next week for the greatest show on Earth. Come.